It's the Score North Twin Show. I just asked him, and he wanted it. And as soon as he said that, the decision was was made. It was uh, that that one. Um, they're all a little different when you walk out there to the mound. Uh, that one really just came down to if Sonny wanted it, felt he could do it, it was his. And he it was more. He, his response was more than just I can do it. It was I, I you know I'll, it's mine. I got it. And uh, he did. Dude, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Let's go. You told him to get the F off the mound, I think. Yeah, do we do we have like lip reading on? Because because we were I was actually at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings on U of M campus for the the Hubbard Radio Fantasy Football Draft. So we didn't have and there was no captions on the TV. So we're all just kind of watching. Oh, man, this is the time clearly where you would or third time through the order. His right. pitch counts at like 94. Scuffling. This is like very clearly the time. And they probably decided already at two o'clock in the afternoon. He's kind of scuffling. This is the time where he comes out of the game. And then after the game is over, win or lose, he's kind of pissed off about it. And, you know, whatever, because that's Sonny Gray. But they left him in. And he, he gets a strikeout, gets a, we'll call it a can of corn to the warning track for the third out. <laughs> it worked out. Right? It worked out. It, it worked out. So <laughs> so I tweeted about it, too, because I remember there was uh, one time Maeda, um, about a month ago or so, was pitching, and the same thing occurred. You know, because when Rocco comes out, you just expect that the starter is it's Cap and, Captain Hook. He's gone. And I remembered that there was a Maeda situation, which I think Kenta got the last out as well of the inning we're talking about in particular. And someone tweeted back, it's happened twice with Pablo Lopez this season. It's happened with Gray, and it's it's like five, it's like four or five times that Rocco has gone to the mound and not pulled a pitcher. So Interesting. I did wonder, you know, in the back of my mind, in the back of my conspiracy laden head, I did wonder <laughs> if that was also sort of um, an olive branch for you know, if you stay here, you know, it if we sign you, I will allow you to pitch sometimes. Wait, you yeah. think you think Rocco was walking out with like off off season free agency in his mind as he like strode well, them out? Well, I think no. I think Rocco's might have been talked to again. I don't think Rocco. I don't think this is like. I think very little of this is Rocco solo. That was well, last night. Go ahead. So Dex. I was gonna say I I was I'm I was pulling my sports dad move. I had problems with my stream. For watching the game, and I've been watching the Guardians broadcast all all series for the most part. Well, during that part, I was having trouble, so I turned on my old fancy uh, radio and listened to Provis. And Provis said nice. that I think it's only like Sonny had a long string of starts, but it's very rare that he got he has gotten pulled a lot. And then when the Cleveland broadcast did pick back up on my TV screen, uh, they mentioned, "Yeah, I think we'll see Sonny Gray pitching somewhere else next year." Now, granted, the Cleveland broadcast is one of the most interesting TV broadcasts I have witnessed in the in in the uh, my my search for looking for other TV broadcasts. They're very in your face and confident for an organization that shouldn't be <laughs> in your face. And I honestly, I can't tell yeah. if I like it or not definitively. They should, maybe really they should weird. keep keep our pictures out of your mouths, yeah. Cleveland broadcast. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You let us worry about Sonny Gray in the in the third time through the order. Yeah, he'll be a uh, he'll be a great. Um, where where would he go? Well, he already tried the Yankees once, yeah, right? He, he ain't going back to New York. Well. No, I think it's a, a it's a perfect fit here. It really is. And he, I guess, all right. There's a, there's a few ways to go off this, and since, since we're starting with Sonny Gray, last night was a great instance of something that could happen in a playoff game, and yes. Sir. I, I, I don't think the answer can always be stay in the game and finish your game. I think it has to be, I mean, I, I wouldn't have complained at all if Rocco decided, hey, come on, man, like we're almost to 100 pitches. You're, you haven't been the greatest third time through the order the last couple of years. Like that's, that's one of those that was very 50-50 for me. I love the human element of, hey, man, we're not just making this decision on a spreadsheet today. We didn't decide this at 2 o'clock. I'm going to look you in the eye. And I want you to tell me, I love I love some of that stuff because these guys are humans and they need to feel like they're in control. They need to feel confident. And so if you're constantly taking the ball out of their hand in situations where they want to keep going and competing, 
that's where you start to get some weird chemistry issues. So, you know, and we've criticized the Twins for that. On the other hand, if he is on the ropes in a playoff game against a great lineup or something, you have to like that. Those types of decisions are where Rocco doesn't have one of those like earpieces and Falvey's up in the front. Like that's a Rocco decision in that moment, the way he laid it out last night. So, but they're going to run into that. I mean, when they faced the Astros, and I think it was Maeda and Barrios, both gave you five really good innings in back-to-back games, close games. And they had kind of decided three hours before the game, oh, that's it. We're going to go to Cody Stashak or whoever now. So I'm well, curious to see thing. how they handle that in a in a game two wild card against the Rangers or something. You know. Well, and I, I think what you're alluding to, though, also brings up the question of what have they learned? And I hope it's something, which is, okay, one is I like going out and asking certain pitchers, Gray qualifies, Lopez qualifies, how they feel. Joe Ryan like, might lie to your might lie to your face. Yeah, I and I don't know. How's your Joe? hamstring? How's your groin? Yeah, no, it's it feels great, great. It's great. But you just gave up a five hundred foot home run. <laughs> ah, I feel good. I feel real good. But um L- Lopez and Gray qualify to me as guys who should be talked to as adults. And if they feel that they can get out of a predicament, I'm going to listen. But you just brought up what I think is the most intriguing question. And that again is what concerns me. In trying to get a playoff win. Is the is the wreckage that's been strewn by the manager and front office and playoff games going to change? Because you just brought up the most important thing, which was Cody Stashek, which is Randy Dobnik starting a game. So, like beyond, will you leave Gray in? Let's say you won't. Who are you going to replace him with? Because some of the moves in the playoffs have been, I think, I can say this without without being um, without it being hyperbole, have been beyond weird, odd, and at times dumb. So if you if you are going to go to your bullpen, you're going to bring in your best guys? Okay, I sort of get that. In fact, I get that. But what I don't understand is some of the decisions that have been made, you know, both with Dominic starting game two against the Yankees in 2019, and then, and then the Astros games, which, by the way, were winnable games. The Twins could have won that series. So well, what have what have you learned there? That's my big question because if you haven't learned from that, we're going to run into the exact same problems. Well, but but sometimes sometimes they're problems, and I agree with you. Last night there was a couple things that happened where in the moment I'm sitting there, you know, I'm in my snake draft, and I've got my naked tenders, and I'm enjoying a good fantasy football draft, and I'm looking at I got I didn't even know about your naked tenders. Dude. Some sauce. You guys aren't in on the naked the naked you tenders. Should, Dip them in should, the sauce. Yeah. You, you dip them in the sauce. sauce. You dip them in the sauce. Okay, that's okay. I would rather I'd rather them have some I, sauce. It just on sounded them. weird to me. Uh, naked tenders. Naked tenders. There's got to be some tenders. naked tenders fans out there in the score. Oh, I'm sure there are. I just plus uh, when okay. you're doing a fantasy draft and you're like on your computer, that's true. Okay, and stuff. Yeah, right. I don't want. I don't want. This yeah, is where I had the I had the advantage last night because. Half the right. people, it's going around there. Like, oh, it's my ah, turn to pick, and I, oh, I gotta like, oh, like wash off my hands Patrick every time. Patrick Mahomes, like, he yeah. was taken an hour oh, and a half ago. Oh, oh I gotta look somewhere else. Meanwhile, Macadac with his clean hands and his naked tenders all day long to prep for the <laughs> uh, so the snake dresses. But I'm but I'm watching that thing play out last night. I'm like, wait, why would you this damn Rocco? Why would you pinch hit? Kyle Farmer for Ed Julian in this spot, right? In my mind, it's like, just let your, there's there's five or six guys in your lineup. Just let him hit. I don't care about platoon. Keep him in the game. Let him hit. Plus, it might come around later where there's a platoon yes. advantage for your best hitter, right? Like, Great point. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Kyle Farmer hit a nuke out to the warning track. Or didn't he hit a, was that the Double. near home run yes. off the top of the fence? In fact, in fact, Castro thought it was gone and decided to start jogging, which is why he didn't score. Was it Castro who hit it or what? No, Castro no, was on the base. Farmer path. hit right. it. Castro thought it's gone and just starts to jog That's and didn't right. score because he started yes. to, to jog. Polanco How also do... hit one off the top of the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That like weird, was weird away. It was a weird game. Weird game. But they have a system where, hey, we're, we are going to go all in on platoon advantages. If we feel like this is a spot, even if Ed Julian is a better overall hitter than Kyle Farmer, we feel like in this situation against this platoon split, lefty versus righty, so I don't know. Part of me fights that because why are you pulling some of your best players out of the game? But sometimes they're right about it. Like last night, Matt Walner gets two plate appearances, draws a walk. He was 0 for 1 with a walk. And then they bring uh, the next three plate appearances in place of Matt Walner were 
Jordan Luplo, who struck out, like yeah. a non-competitive at bat. I hated that. Like this is a division on the line, season on night, season on the line, but like division, you can wrap it up here, and you're literally bringing in like a minor league hitter to to face good pitching. And then Stevenson, who's literally like a 30 year old career minor leaguer. Yeah. And I get it. They're trying to play the platoon splits, but those guys go 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Matt Walner is a first round pick who's been one of your best hitters, better against righties than lefties. So I understand some of it. I'm fighting some of that where it's like, why is Walner out of the game, regardless of lefty righty, for two quad A hitters in a division on the line situation? But it worked with Farmer and they let Sonny Gray answer the question in the way that he wanted to. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay, part of what concerns me, though, and, and again, they're now seven games up on the Guardians. So, like, they are going to the playoffs. So, like, I'm seeing it now through the prism of what are you going to do to end an 18-game playoff losing streak? And part of what concerns me is this. They are so predictable now in what they do as far as, Phil, what, what you just ta- talked about, which is platoon splits. And, you know, if you bring in if you bring in a southpaw reliever, we're going to go to our right-handed bats. And we don't even care if those those right-handed bats might not be the equivalent of the guys that we're going to replace. The predictability concerns me a lot because they're going and, – and, again, I this is beyond Baldelli in my opinion. I, I don't think he's just in a vacuum down in the dugout. Like, this is a no. strategic decision. Yeah. And what concerns me is getting worked in a playoff game, because I'll go back to this. Those games are going to be won or lost by margins, by small decisions. And it's as simple as this. What was the uh, um, the home game about two weeks ago where Julian comes out to hit, gets announced, the opposing team, I forget whom, goes says, okay, cool, we're going to go to a – Left-handed reliever, Julian then gets lifted and never plays. Like those, are the type yeah. of things you're going to have to. You got to be smarter than being so predictable that you're going that that your moves are going to be used against you in a regular season game. Okay, it's probably not great, but it might work out fine in a playoff game. What they did last night, especially with Stevenson and Luplo, is how you lose a game. That's what concerns me against and, a good team. And I'm trying to figure out because like Stevenson and Luplo almost certainly aren't going to be on your 26 man wild card roster in a month from now. So if it let's say it's hey Walner's had two plate appearances against the righty and now they're bringing in a lefty reliever and Donnie Barrels is the right-handed bat that we're bringing in. I'm okay with that. I think yeah. they need to they need to draw a line where it's like okay. Right. Totally all four platoon uh platoon splits driving your decisions within reason. If we're going to replace a first round pick with a nine, uh, an 855 OPS who, okay, he's better against righties than lefties for like minor league hitters. And then that bat is not available. Then later on when a right-handed reliever comes back in for the fifth plate appearance, we got to draw a line somewhere. Um, and so maybe that's what it is. Like Kyle Farmer's above that line. Donovan Solano's above that line. Certainly, I think both catchers are above that line. Joey Gallo came in to pinch run for uh, Vasquez well, last night and then got to play. Like, like that's where Joey Gallo shouldn't be on the postseason well, roster either. <laughs> but you just, so so you just, when, when they meet at, at 2 o'clock to, like, decide the fate of things, right? This is how destiny is going to go because we're going to decide at 2 o'clock, despite the fact that we can't tell what the game flow is going to be. Um, this is where I would love them to actually consult this show. Joey Gallo, Joey Gallo did score. He did score. He, yeah, yeah, he did. But you know what? That's Stevenson's job. If you're going to have Stevenson or Gallo on on your playoff roster, I'm actually going to keep Stevenson over Gallo, and he's going to pinch run. He's going to be a defensive replacement. Um, he's going to do things like he's not pinch hitting for me unless I absolutely have to. Joey Gallo has become a pinch runner extraordinaire, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's Stevenson's true. better at that. <laughs> Yeah. Stevenson's got speed. Stevenson on yeah. first base can steal a base. Like this, this is where I feel like they get over their skis at times and outsmart themselves completely. Like, do they realize that Joey Gallo becoming almost exclusively a pinch runner is being laughed at? Like nobody's saying, have well, you they, seen? But they don't the, care if people are laughing at Have you at seen them? what the twins are doing? But it's just so dumb. 
but they don't it's care. Dumb. They don't care that it's dumb. Like they, I know, but they should because they're going to lose games because they're being dumb. That's the very point. You're trying That's to, the point. You're trying to shame them. Do you guys think? Okay. Do you guys think yes or no? Joey Gallo is on this postseason roster. No. I'm, no. I'm very afraid he's going to be. Yes. I don't think he is. I don't think. He I is. hope you guys are right. I hope you guys are right. I don't trust him. It's such an. It's such you, an. You guys um, are unless, right. Unless you have, unless Kirilov can't go, I mean, Buxton looks like he can't go, and there's just openings. And okay, well, we need, well, we need someone, and it's either him or Luplo or something. I mean, would they choose Luplo over Gallo for? A, I don't know. I don't know where their heads at on that front. Kirilov can go. They're just not calling him up yet because they want to see that he can play a bunch of games consecutively without being hurt. I they feel are- like I'm going to pause the show. I'm going to pause the show. Mm-hmm. I feel like your tone is too negative today. Okay. This team has taken two straight against Cleveland. They are now seven games up in the division. Yep. They're seven games over 500. They're yep. actually closer to catching the two seed than losing the division. People are all, oh, my God, are they going to blow the division? They might catch the Mariners for the two seed. They've got three excellent starting pitchers at the What's top the of their of the rotation. Show? What's the goal of the show? To win a playoff game. Yes. I'm telling you. And what... they're going to be in the playoffs. Yes. So what I'm telling you now is I've moved on. And they I'm score trying to eight win runs a playoff game. And I'm trying to help them win a playoff game, and the only way to do it is tough love. The I only feel like way you're just it... complaining about things. That's no, what I feel like. no, no, no. I am seeing it through the prism of the entire reason this show was brought back after a two-year hiatus. To, to win bitch a about the game Twins. <laughs> and to tell them what they're doing wrong so that they can get it right. Everything they do that we basically have told them to do has helped them. Okay. And everything... And everything they do, Sonny Gray being left in was a long time, long time, rightfully so, gripe of this show. They did it last night, and guess what? It worked. Name one thing that we've told them to do that when they've done it has not worked. Because well, it's common that, sense. So are you saying that we've been perfect in our assessment? I mean, there is a tweet floating around where I said I would trade Royce Lewis for two years of Frankie Montaz. Like, and I would for Otani. Years well, ago. right, but then they but then they called up the right guys. Then they started to play the right guys. Then they started, you do it our way, you'll win. I wanted them to dump Gray when these morons, again, these dead-ass twins were doing the wrong things. I'm not going to apologize for the fact that this team has lost 18 consecutive playoff games. I'm not, this is tough love. I will Judd. say yesterday, even I was high stress. I was all, like, a, if, if 10 is playoff Declan in the Astros series, I was at like a six- at points yesterday because because they had so many times with runners in scoring position, they couldn't come through. But mm-hmm. eventually, they came through. And at the end of the day, they beat the team. They're seven games up, and I'm optimistic about it. I definitely can't come in here and basically bleep on their flowers for having a seven-game lead and having a good chance to finally Cleveland's win Cleveland's not a playoff game. team, though, Dex. We're talking about a playoff but, game but you should a playoff be, team. Okay, okay but, but, te- but Texas is a playoff team, and they just took five out of seven over the last two weeks from Texas. They and if you get Texas, I love your chances, Texas. but you still have to do the right things. You still have to do the right things. You still have to understand what you're doing. Judd, let's say they did some wrong things, okay? And I'll grant that. I am criticizing some of the things that they've done, too, over the last, even while they've been winning. They have scored. Forget about like the six or seven runs they scored off of a position player. They've scored 21 runs in two games against a Guardians team that's on its last breath. I I agree. They're not the Braves. But like the Guardians are home. It's Francona's last chance. And the Twins have gone in there over the last two days and have stomped them out. Maybe not playing perfect baseball, but I think you're mistaking the goal of the show for being where it is, which is win a playoff game, and mm-hmm. you're putting it up here and saying, no, they need to be the Braves. Well, eventually, I think that'll no. be the new goal of the show. No, but no, no, winning no, no. a playoff game doesn't require you being perfect in every decision, I, everything that saying, you do for no, three hours. I'm not saying you have to be perfect. I'm saying you can't be dumb. You can't make dumb decisions. They, they made, look, Rocco made a great one last night. Sonny Gray staying in was the right call. And, and yes, you're right about Farmer... Farmer pinch hitting for Julian actually worked. But then as you br- brought up, you put Stevenson in and Luplo in. And those are the type of things that lose you a playoff game. Because like you said, you're going to get worked there. You're gonna What you can't have happen is you cannot have, and I don't fault the players here, you can't have the manager and ostensibly too, the, the front office get worked by the opposing team. I don't think they got worked in that game last night. Do you think they, they got worked? 
I think that in a playoff game, you could be yes, you could be working. Do you, I'm not do you, th- do you think Cleveland. like that the 2023 Astros are the 1927 Yankees? Like every every team makes decisions that could go either way. I, here's here's the here's my grand takeaway here is that the Twins have destroyed the Guardians two nights in a row, two games where they they had to win to put the division away. They've mm-hmm. done it. They've won these games by a combined like 20 runs, and they've created the necessary separation. Positive, positive, positive. Declan and I are, yep, that's exactly what we should have done. And like as an aside, I don't know if I would have put Luplo and Stevenson in there. Probably not a decision that I would have made personally. Right. I'm not in love with that. That's right. the that's like the footnote to my opinion today. You have come barreling in here and you have said, oh, the footnote is that they won a couple games, I guess. But my biggest takeaway is they're going to get beat 10 to nothing in any playoff no, game they play no. because they put loop blow in. No, you're I not am. listening to me. I'm am saying you're going to win a playoff could? game three to two and you are going to get. And what they did last night with loop blow and Stevenson in particular, those are the small things that cost you in a playoff game. Did it cost them last night? My God, the Houston game. I mean, do you guys recall that? 2020? But it happened. It happened three years ago. And I know. Have you learned? Have you learned anything? If you have us, have you slept in three years? Yeah, and 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 we'll figure out. You're gonna make you're gonna make chess moves in a playoff game that are gonna win and lose you the game. Yep. That's that's just going to happen. It's good. That's gonna happen in life. You're gonna try to make a shot in golf that you probably shouldn't make, but you have to go for it because you have to make that shot. Yep. It's going to happen in a playoff game where they're going to have to sub in a lefty because well, a lefty's in or put in a righty. But you don't have to. You have to. Th- you have to consider what's. Go- you have to consider the in- entirety of the game. And if this is going to be your attitude, then I don't want to hear you complain when it happens. I am. Wa- I am sounding the alarm. I'm why sounding the are alarm you sounding now. the alarm? Why? Because they <laughs> want them to end the 18 game playoff losing streak. I think That's you need to why. just like Judd needs. A, Judd needs a drink. When, That's why I'm drinking coffee right now. When Judd says depends on how they win it, this it is does. what he means. Yes. This is this is clearly Don't be for dumb. wrong or right reasons. This is what Judd means. Don't, okay, I, so so uh, if they so on um, so you're saying listen, if they make a dumb and I agree with Jack, there's there's gonna be, you know, fifteen chess moves that you might need to make in a game. You're not going to go fifteen for fifteen. I'm, agreed. I guess in terms of results, you're certainly not going to. Agreed. Even like process. Sometimes we play the result and say, well, Farmer, I think process wise, Farmer for Julian, I, I don't know if I would have done it, but I see the I see the process logic. You're not going to be perfect in your decision making. Baseball is full of imperfections. The best hitters are getting out, you know, 70 percent of the time. Agreed. So I just think, man, like you're just like you. I, I think you have like PTSD, rightfully so. And I do a little bit, too. But, dude, this is a. Royce Lewis again last night is getting on base. The old oh, Polanco God, yeah. is back. I told there you are I'm all so many. Voice. There's yes, but there, there are so many things that are different than two months ago, than a year yes. ago, two years ago, even from four years ago with this team. That I, I I think the the good things that they've been able to add the last couple months yep. overshadows like some of the weird uh, spreadsheet driven decisions that they make. That's where I'm at with this. And I think the players, look, I I agree. I told you, Royce Lewis changes how I feel about this entire team. Like when I watch him play, when I when I watch what he brings, even when he gets out, he is a he is a positive. Um what I'm telling you though is we have now seen with Rocco and Falvey together, we have now seen, if I'm not mistaken, five consecutive playoff defeats, correct? We have seen uh, five six. consecutive six. six. A uh, wild wild card, Yankees, uh, no Ro- two two gamer against the Strohs and a, th- the a wild three game card was Paul oh, with with Rocco okay with That's Rocco fair. and Falvey. That's right. I am look what the team is doing. The players are doing. I think is outstanding. What I am concerned about is the people that don't play the game are going to get in the way. That's what I'm saying. You know so what? I am. I think we found I am some all common ground. On board. I'm all on board the train here, and I'm. You know what? I think Pablo Lopez and Sonny Gray, even if they don't have their best starts, are going to give you uh, what I would call bulldog efforts. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's my. So my whole thing is the PTSD of bad decisions. So I understand we, we, you're not going to go 15 for 15. We've got some right. common ground here. I feel like, which is, they got some pretty good players here. Pretty yep. good, pretty good framework here. Better than it was three months ago. Yes. Let's lean a little more toward let the players play. Let the players yeah. play. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And a little less toward 
tinkering. Okay. I feel like I feel like you almost had an aneurysm though, like after an eight to three division ending win there, like ten minute ten minutes ago. I mean, you were shouting. You were You were old man. You were Abe Simpson yelling at clouds. Yelling at a cloud. I'm not yelling at clouds. I'm yelling at Rocco and Derek. And I'm telling them, do your job, and that means get out of the way. Get out (laughs) of the way. I am I was worked up. If the goal is to win a playoff game, part of why I'm upset is I've seen enough now where I, I'm with with uh, you and Phil, Declan. Like, this team now, with its current structure, with the Kitty Corps being up, is a very different feeling team. And I want them to be given a chance in a playoff game to actually win at least one. And if you play Texas, it's my opinion that you should win the series. I was told, uh, so I'm a, I'm a sleep talker, big time sleep talker in my sleep. I, I babble. I, I say a lot of things. Apparently on Monday night, my fiance told me in the middle of my sleep, I said the words, Judd, I need you to listen to me. <laughs> That's awesome. Judd, Judd, I need you to listen, listen to me. To listen to me. I need you to listen to me. I wonder Dad, what the I wonder what the down. context of the dream was. Probably either pent up twins frustration or microphone problems. My, yeah, you know what? Probably computer. Face. It's probably mic mic and computer problems. There's, she was I like, "What do you think that was like?" It was regards to. Right. I was like, "There is a lot on the table that that could have been." It could, it could I, have been. I guarantee you, it's microphone problems. Because you, you know, told uh, me, God, listen to me a thousand times. You got to listen to this. Here's one other thing we can agree on, okay? If the Twins do finally win their first playoff game in almost 20 years, we're going to celebrate at Burger Press in Edina. We're going <laughs> to cheers some of the best burgers in the Twin Cities. So Burger Press in Edina, just off 494 on France Avenue, is owned and operates an independent burger shop, owned and operated by Minnesota sports fans who are Score North fans. Amazing burgers, Nathan's Hot Dogs. On the YouTube channel, you're seeing exclusive footage of a Score North lunch. Yes, this is a uh, high caliber production here. Those crinkle cut fries, mm. fantastic. They also have awesome wings, crispy chicken sandwiches, shawarma bowls, which are fantastic. Off uh, 494 and France Avenue Burger Press in Edina. Uh, also, hey, there are home games remaining here. If you want to go and nitpick the twins like Judd is going to over the next <laughs> few weeks. The Mets coming in. Me, Judd can put his Mets. Met, his Mets hat on. Me, the Mets. Twins.com slash tickets. Twins.com slash tickets if you want to see Royce Lewis hitting grand slams all over the ballpark. He's got uh, three grand slams in the last week and a half. Tickets are available for upcoming home games here in September. Uh, I'm guessing that there's going to be a lot more people in the ballpark here as they get closer to October as well. So twins.com slash tickets. All right, boys. It's time for us to get on the same page here, work as a team, and try and knock out the Immaculate Grid Challenge. It's right. take, taking the show by storm here. So, God's gonna um, uh, uh, the all star category is kind of. And the Rockies, weird, yeah. but the Rock, yeah, it, it's fine. It's stolen fine. bases. You okay with stolen bases? Um, well, we're going to find out. You know what? You, way more than gold gloves. I like stolen bases. Way like more than gold bases. Gloves. I don't like gold gloves and silver sluggers. I'm not a huge fan of those. Stolen bases are absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. I so, here's, here's what we're looking for we're, going, we're trying to go nine for nine. Uh, I think Boy. we've like for for us to get a rarity score below fifty when you add up all the percentages is really good. So if we if we go down that path, maybe we can uh, flirt with a good rarity score. But we're looking to go nine for nine here: a pirate who was an Astro, a pirate who was a Rocky, and a pirate who stole thirty bases in a season, a Ranger who was an Astro, a Ranger who was a Rocky, and a Ranger who stole thirty in a season. And then we're looking for an Astro who was an All Star, a Rocky who was an All Star. And a 30 stolen base season player who was also an All Star, which is probably like the easiest box on here. Uh, so I'll put uh, I'll put six minutes on the clock here. It's just our own parameter to keep us in line. And off we go. Rocky, who was a pirate, is Justin Morneau. Yeah. Can we do this with all twins? No. Oh I probably can't. That's a really good one. Seven. Seven okay. percent. Oh. I'm gonna try and think of twins here. Uh, Astro, who was an all-star, Ryan Presley, if we want to go twins, right? Uh, yeah, that or was I was an all-star. Uh, yeah. Well, who else were you going to say, Declan? I was going to go a little rarer when the Astros were bad 10 years ago and Michael Bourne. Because we can, 
the stolen bases thing. We can't, we can't use him for steals. Was like Michael Bourne an all? He's an all star. I, I'm pretty sure he was an all star. So like they're they're solo representative in a really bad like team. A, like a bad those bad Astros no, teams guys, from like 09 to 12. I'll defer to you guys on these. I know he was he was one of the shining stolen base beacons. I don't remember him being on an all star team. That, so I would who, or that huge power hitter they had that they signed that was just terrible. All he did was hit bombs and singles and like John Singleton. Out. Yeah, was he an all star no. for them? However, he was no. not an all star. He's also yeah. back there now. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I mean, if we want to start, yeah, well, I'll just take. <clears throat> if you if you're confident on Bourne, let's do Bourne, because that's going to be a low one. <laughs> Point five at a boy. Nice, nice job. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, Rocky All Stars. I mean, there's the obvious like the Gal. We've used Galarraga a couple times. Yeah. Uh, the Larry Car- Walker, Dante Holiday. Bichette, Cargo, uh, Tulo, Todd Helton, Helton, Ubaldo Jimenez. Ubaldo Jimenez for sure was an all star at the one, one point. The one year he was really good, and that was it. I'm trying to think of like, because um, they, they've sent someone every year, even in coming with. Oh, what about Vinny Castilla? Oh, you guys Dante remember him? Bichette, right? Dante Bichette. Dante Bichette. Those guys he, are old school Rockies. Yeah, that's a good I love Vinny Castilla. He, he Vinny was a Castilla. Brave. Castilla. Yeah, you're good. There, he there is. you go. Vinny Castilla. 91 go. 206. Yep. Three percent. Nice. He was a brave for a while. I owned him on my rotisserie baseball uh, team. Who's an obscure 30 steel guy that also made an all-star game? So obvious ones are like... Besides like, Bourne, who we just... But that we're, we're good with Bourne at the point five. Like yep. Barry Bonds was was a big one, but um, even did Knobloch... Did Knobloch ever steal 30? Yeah, he stole 47, yeah. I think. And he made all-star yep. games. That's a great one. That's right? a great one. Yep. Check now. Point three. Point three. three. Nice. The disrespect. Nice. The nice. Respect. Uh, did. Um, wasn't. Uh, uh, not Barry. Bobby. Wasn't Bobby Bonds also a Steeler? Did he play for the Pirates? But he didn't play for the Pirates. He played he for the. He didn't no. play for the Pirates. Try, try this one. Try Omar Marino. Do you guys remember him? No, that's before my time. Okay, and I think the Texas one, Mickey Rivers actually went from the Yankees. Mickey Rivers. He went from the Angels to the Yankees to the Rangers, and he he was a big time runner. Niger Morgan's another one. Oh, that's a good one. I think he stole thirty with the Pirates. I know he played for the Pirates, and he stole a lot of bases. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Mickey was okay. stole thirty for the for the for no for Texas. So for Texas. It, yeah, so if that's right for Texas, then we could go... Mickey who? Mickey Rivers. Mickey, Mickey Rivers. Quick. Okay. Mick the Quick. I mean, he had to have stolen... If he's Mick the Quick, he had oh. to have... No! 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 I'm... I'm oh, my God. I'd like to apologize. I think, I think that's like, the first time I, I've steered you wrong. I, I think, like, Elvis Andrews or Ian Kinsler probably would have just been... Oh, boy. I'd like to apologize. I thought for sure he got to 30. How does that feel? I've done that to us it, it about five bad, times. You know, it, it feels bad, but Do you know try what? Bob you gotta, Feller? Bob you, Feller? You've got to put your uh, pants back on. and uh, Let's try Niger Morgan just since we're, you know, just now we're just dicking around. Yeah. Oh, nice. There you go. No. Nope. So we both would have. Judd we're and I both, both would have both been wrong. We're both wrong. I'd like there. to apologize. I'd like to apologize mm. to the fans out there. I let you down, most right now, importantly. Declan has a minute and a half to just guess freely without. We have three guesses left. With no here. regret. It's, it's ruined. No remorse. So just show us up here, Declan. Rivers, how can And you Elvis Andrews like is the odd. We're trying to get too cute. Kinsler and Andrews, yeah, but they're twenty four percent. We had a rarity score going. I yeah. think that's where we. I don't really feel that bad right now. You know what? I mean, Roberto weird? Clemente was it? That's another obvious oh, one though. Man. McCutcheon for sure, but again, these are like Isn't yeah, these ruin the rare, these ruin the rarity score. Yeah, yeah. absolutely huge. Oh, wrong guesses though. Um, oh boy, that was a shot at us, Phil. Well, I, it's happening. I'm comfortable taking shots at the rarity score when we start. Nolan Ryan. When we start with 10 percent in our first four guesses, we got to go. He's got one guess. I mean, Nolan Ryan is the. You want, yeah, if you want to jack up the, the rarity uh, score, one. Nolan Ryan. Yeah, who cares at this point? All right, so there it is. You know what? We did get too cute, but I. I'm with I, you. Like I stand by the process. Yeah, we can't. We can't. Like, like the kin, like the Kinsler Andrews. Those guys are going to be too high. More processing. Yeah. All right. Who, who are some of the? Oh boy. Scroll down here. Yeah, Seven such an was easy the average. one. Average. They had a yeah. lot of. Such an easy one too. No one. Yeah. 
Oh, Connor Joe, I would not. Yeah, Elvis Andrews. And, see, that's the thing. It's like Andrews and Kinsler were, were yeah. just going to destroy the rarity score. Texas doesn't have historically, I don't think, a lot of stolen base guys. Like they've like in the '90s, it was a bunch of power hitters. Like, did Rusty yeah. Greer ever steal thirty? Let's look that up. Uh, so on the list here, Elvis Andrews, um, Ian Kinsler, Who played center. Oh, for Alfonso them? Soriano, that would have been a good one. Otis Nixon, Juan Fr- uh, Julio Franco, mm. Mm, uh, Julio Cecil Franco. Espy. That's what Becky Rivers. Look at that. The Rangers Espy have Rivers. only had seventeen thirty stolen base guys in their history. That's and that goes back to like. Oh wow! So Bobby Bonds did do it with Texas. With Texas, okay, but not Texas, because yeah. he didn't play with. Oh, Pitt. he did not okay. play with Pittsburgh. Okay, well that's disappointing. All right, well we tried, we came, we'll, we we'll saw, we failed. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow. Yes. Mickey Rivers in 1975 with the Angels stole 70 freaking bases, but with Texas, yeah, he wasn't even close. Damn. <sighs> I I am sorry. It's a, I, it happens all. I started I started that downward trend, and I'm the like, problem is like you know you're kind of and we need this from you. You're kind of on an island when you go, but we have to go old school to be obscure. So we're out on because yeah. yeah. I well, can't once like, we verify start to go, your work on some of these. Yeah. So once we start to go with um, go after a rarity score, you're right. Did, did you by tough. the way see that that guy who mocked us, but it was sort of. Funny with the with the grid oh, on yeah. the, Hall the Hall of, of Famers. Yeah, he's, he's cheating though. Like he doesn't know. Cheating. He's not. He doesn't know like eighteen nineties players <laughs> just off funny. the back of his hand. I mean, Nap Joy is so Nap Joy was a Nap cub, right? Joy. Yeah, was he a cub? Yeah, my, a, no, he he was an A and a Philly, I believe. A buddy of mine okay. at, a, at his at his house like two weekends ago. We had a couple drinks and we just played it for a second time, but we just like looked up the most rare people we can get and we got a rarity score to one. Yeah, we 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 just like how, let's just see right. what what this comes out to be, and we literally got a one rarity score. Nice. Well, we'll uh, review the film. We'll get better tomorrow, and uh, we'll see. Easily what, correctable, Phil. We'll see. We'll see Judd's list of things that go wrong in today's Twins game, even if they do win ten wrong. to one. I don't think they'll go wrong. I'm looking After for Judd. I am looking for things to correct. We call it correction <laughs> period. I'm a football guy by nature. That's what I do. <laughs> So, uh, hey, Scorner Twin Show, it's back. We're ready for the rest of September into October here. And uh, we'd appreciate it if you guys could give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple or Spotify if that's where you listen. And we'll see you guys probably again tomorrow here on the show.